Hey guys, Chris Kessler from Kessler Science. And today I'm gonna to answer the question I get asked all the time. What's the difference between your station labs and your inquiry labs? I'm gonna answer that right now. So the station labs are written to be used at the beginning of the 5E method. They're usually used in the exploration phase and this is where students are just getting to know the content. They actually may not have even been uh, exposed to the content at all. So these eight stations are gonna be set up around your room. Four of them are gonna be input stations where new information is gonna be coming into the students' brains. And then four stations are going to be output stations where they're proving that they understood what they learned at the input stations. The input stations consisting of, consist of exploring, researching, watching, and reading. And then the output stations consist of assessing, organizing, illustrating, and writing. Between those eight stations, students are gonna be student-centered, student learning. You are gonna become the facilitator in your classroom and they're gonna get new knowledge. After that, you're going to be um, clearing up any misconceptions that may have happened. You're gonna be doing some explaining and then, in my belief, this is where the inquiry labs come in during that elaboration phase. So how are they different? The inquiry labs are more of a traditional, hands-on um, inquiry lab. This is our, these are like uh, what you would consider maybe a cookie cutter lab or students are gonna be creating their own experiments based on some given parameters. So the cool part about the inquiry labs that we've developed are that they are written in three different levels. We've got the modified version, I've got a dependent version, and an independent version. Let's take a look at the independent lab first. These are gonna be the labs that you give your above level classes, maybe GT students, or just students that you want to create a lab based on a, a given set of parameters. So they're gonna be given some background information, some materials, and they're gonna to have to come up with the hypothesis, the procedures, and what that CER uh, claim is at the end of the lab. And then they're gonna have some reflection questions. Now the dependent version of the lab is gonna be used for most students in your, uh, in your school. This is gonna be a lab that has the procedures already written out for them. It's going to have the data tables and graphs um, given to them and maybe they have to fill in the X and Y axis, they have to fill in some information, they have to analyze um, some graphs that may be presented to them, but they're going to be given a little bit more information and it's a little bit more uh, hand-holding from a lab perspective, not from a teacher perspective. The modified version is gonna be similar to the dependent, but the difference is some of the data points are gonna be filled out on the data tables. The, the X and Y axis may be labeled, the title of the graph may be labeled, and maybe even some data, some different data points on the graphs are actually labeled. They're also gonna have sentence stems throughout. So this is great for ELL learners, this is great for students who need um, or have modifications and may need some extra help. It's also great for those paraprofessionals who are in your classroom and, and the, the lab is already modified for them. They're not gonna actually have to modify the lab themselves. So uh, the, the modified labs are awesome and teachers really told me that they wanted to have these included in the labs and so we made that happen. All of the labs are gonna require some materials. It is a much more hands-on um, experience. Think of a traditional lab experiment that you did back when you were in school. That's what the inquiry labs are for. They both have their place in the 5E method. I personally think that the exploration phase should be consist of the station labs, although some teachers may be able to use the uh, inquiry labs in that place as well. So maybe they do the station lab for a couple days and they do the inquiry lab right after that. The inquiry labs were really written uh, for the students to already come to that lab with a little bit of information. And that's where I like to use that in the elaboration phase rather than right up front. But I know that, uh, that some people like to use you know, the exploration right up front and that's totally fine. It was whatever works for your class. I also wanna note that the station labs are included in the 5E lessons. 
So when you buy the 5e, any of the 5e lessons bundle, you're also getting the station labs. The inquiry labs bundle came later in the life cycle of Kessler Science products, and that is a standalone product. So if you want the inquiry labs, those are bought either, either through unit bundles or a full inquiry lab bundle. Hopefully that clears it up and, and lets you know what the differences are. I think together they are super, super powerful. If you have both of them in your classroom, you're gonna see students' scores rise, you're gonna see their retention rise, and it's gonna be um, just very impactful to your classroom. Thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you later.